Hello everybody and welcome back to Lost Souls. In this episode, as you can see behind me, I have been busy messing around with things like um, applied energistics to make things a bit easier for ourselves. Let's have a quick look at the, at the base that I've done. Here I've actually set up from here some smart, ME dense smart cables, red, green and blue, going off three faces of this. Uh, the different colours are so they don't link together. But I think I've got here, oh yes, I've still got one of those. Let's remove that. An anchor, I don't need an anchor when you've got different colours, you can remove that quite happily. On on here we can put a, a, a cable facade. Let's do that as well, so it makes it hide it up nicely, like that. And then of course in here we can do, um, let's put some cobblestone uh, stone bricks. So everything sort of reasonably well hidden. So let's have a look at what this is. Basically there's no changes here. It's just a, a different colour. And underneath here we go red. So we're now using, out of this, we're using, well it tells you here, look. 9 of 32 channels. So we were over, so in this one we've got 14 going. And in the green I haven't got very many, I think. Actually you can't see it. Because <laughs> I covered it up. There's about three. And these are just um, terminals which are actually linked to this one. And they're linked because they, even though they're not physically connected, they're actually linked because they, these blocks or devices are connected. Like that. I've also set up more recipes. So I've got recipes for quite a lot of, all mostly um, stuff from um, applied energistics so far. A lot of it's applied energistics. And in here we basically, oh and I didn't show you this, this is the storage interface. So I've got a crafting card. On each of these ME interfaces I've got a, a storage bus. And there's nothing in the storage bus, it just has to be there. And then you can put a crafting card in here. So when you then take some of these items out, let's take those out, it should start to craft more, as you can see it just came up. And the crafting will be happening in here, as you can see. So that's set to max speed with these ones here so that will then and the output of these is coming through here so I've got an input but I've got an EME, ME interface on one side with the recipes so we've got actually strangely enough we've got this one I'll look at that in a second so we've got the three different processes in here and then they just get in, exported out that so the automation of this one is very straightforward there's nothing to, there's nothing smart in that one at all the same with this one this one is just doing uh, printed silicon circuits and of course these ones are logic, calculation or not I think whichever way around it is and engineering. And then the last one here I've got another one where I've actually got some stuff for seeds. So I've got another interface on this to make pure seeds, uh, pure crystals we can do it like this one. And then there's an import and this basically then goes to a slightly larger crafting thing. Oops, sorry. Oh yes, I was wondering what the noise was. That's this. We'll have a look at that in a minute. So, oops, that's how that, that's how that works. I didn't mean to do that. Why does it do that? Just walk along, press the right button I guess. Huh? In fact I don't need these with us, so we can put those away now. They should just get pick, picked up by the dank null. So that's that part. So the, the only crafting I've done is really in there. Nothing special. On the back of these I've got two ME interfaces. So this one I've got glass. So this is a redstone furnace. So obviously it's just sand or glass. And this one is a pulverizer. It's a fast pulverizer and I've got some recipes in here to make the, the dusts. So. So it basically says it makes one fluix dust from one fluix crystal quartz and certis quartz. That's that. Now let's have a look at this thing over here. I've also moved away some more bits and pieces. I moved the um, or resource ore miners away. So can actually have a look at those. And they're by actually where the rockets are. So let's go and have a look at that. Actually, look at that now. It's straightforward. So I've put those here. So, so this is the void resource or resource miner, and that's just collecting stuff into that like this. So quite a lot of brownstone and cracked limestone. It's 
the problem with that one. And this one's over here. In fact, I would like to get rid of that marker. The marker's there because it just happens to be the edge of the underneath here is where the edge is. This is the void or the void or minor in here. So that's doing it, behaving exactly the same way. You saw that, just saw an item disappear from there. So it's just doing those. And I've still got that crystal lens on here. And that was basically it. I did put down my mob crusher here just because the mobs are spawning. <laughs> and this is my total effort of decoration here. So I put some borders down. <laughs> right, that's it. So nothing's changed down here yet. Let's go and have a look back to the overworld base. And I wonder what to start with. Let's do this first of all. What I'm playing with here is this is, this is a what have I caught now? Bad luck. I'm gonna get bad luck. <laughs> Anyway, I've never seen a good luck version of that. So what this is here is a drum. Now the drums are actually different from a lot of the others because with the comparator here, it'll give you an output. So this one is a drum that's completely full. So it's got, let's just do right click it. So you can see it's got 16 buckets worth in there. So that's giving us an output signal of 15. And what I'm doing here is I've got a, a subtract mode in here. So I've got a 15 here, and you know that this is 15, so 15 minus 15 is going to give us zero. So as soon as I take out one bucket from here, if we go and find a bucket, that's it, I need to find a bucket. Hopefully I've got some around. Yes. If I take one bucket out of here, what's going to happen is that that's going to then be 14. Like that. And then this signal will then be 14. And that goes and that's off put it back in again that's still off i think i've got the right subtract no i don't sure that's off ah that's on so it needs to be in the compare mode you see so when it's full it's giving a signal of 15 and in in the mode here it says mode compare so it's comparing 15 against 15 and it's on so if i take out a bucket here then it's only 14 so it goes off so let's do take another bucket out of there so now we should have a, a signal of 12 or 13 yeah sorry and uh, it's still off take another one out it's still off okay so until you put it stuff back in again it gets filled up let's fill it up and then it goes on again oops it's going through my thing through my handy bag which I don't want it to do really let's still do it manually so this one should turn it on like that so we know that when it's full it's on in the compare mode like this so what i'm doing here is the same thing so at the moment it's in subtract mode but that's this drum is full now the difference between this one and that one this has got 256 buckets so you can't just do one bucket it won't turn it won't change the power let's turn that to compare mode and then this will should activate the block with the item and it's set to redstone signal on so it has to be on which basically means this isn't that full it should be the opposite way around of course now this is what's going on here is i haven't turned it on yet but as you can see i've got oops got a drum of experience and i don't really want the drum experience and let's put it in there and on this side here i've got a resonant servo and some fluid ducts so if I now put this on, so actually let's have a look in here. We've got this term of knowledge, which is doing the conversion for us. We've seen this before. So it's going up and down all the time. So as soon as I turn this on, the fluid can start to flow out of here. And then what's going to happen is this term of knowledge is going to slowly fill up. As you can see, it's going in fast enough now to actually do that. It's got to get to 10. 10,000 or 10 buckets worth and as soon as it gets to 10 buckets worth it will transfer across I'm not sure oh maybe we'll have enough we'll see six so it slowly goes up and it's basically emptying and filling itself all the time I know. 
So that's going to be working for a while before that gets filled up. But it will actually slowly increase. And it's increasing because of the um, 7,076. It's increasing because of this dropping. You can't see it, but it drops experience into here. And every time it drops experience, it goes into these pipes. So you can see that pipe empties. But there's more coming in. Uh, sometimes. Depends on the mobs, really. So we have to wait. It's going up very, very slowly, but it does go up. And then when it's full, this one will send it across. And then when, it, when it's full, it will also get activated on here. So at the moment, this drum is full. Oops, it's done, didn't want to do that. It's actually full anyway because I've got this one to put that in there. So drumming knowledge, let's right click it with this one. You see it's got 256,000, so it's got 256 buckets in there. So when this is on, actually I want it when it's off, don't I? I want it to be activated when it's off. So we'll let that get on. And then that should be then, what's well, gone quiet. Activate block when the signal redstone signal is off. So it's got space in there, I think. It's hard to see. So just when it's on. Actually, that's probably the wrong way around. It wants to be when it's off, doesn't it? Yeah, because it's not the signal's on. So as soon as it's on, it'll carry on. We want it off. So this will slowly fill up when it's. When that goes down enough, it'll turn it on. So that's how that's going to work. So that's really what that was all about. I hope you understood that. Might have been a bit unclear thinking about it. Anyway, so it doesn't go splashing around all the time, basically is what I want it to do, just to turn itself off. Now, next thing. End of the last episode, I was preparing for space. That, I think, is most of the the changes I did change this so I moved it around so this is now the front at uh, the back of it and we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing again um, have I got another bucket or something no let's get rid of these so in my inventory here I've got the stuff that we need for the next machine so we need the electrolyzer did I build the electrolyzer. I don't think I did craft the electrolyzer. Let's just go and craft the electrolyzer. So it will be Planet Selector Electrolyzer. Maybe we can do that straight away. We can. Good. Also we run out of um, user interfaces and another one of these but we've got plenty of the other bits for the time being. Is that steel plates? Okay. So now, so I think I've got everything we need for that now. What I need is the projector, or just, what did I get? Electrifications. <laughs> That's a new one. So the electrolyzer. What we're going to do is going to put it down in the same direction. I hope it's the right way. We'll see. Yeah, so it's got fluid output hatches here. now. On both sides and these are fluid input hatches and they match up so that's why I put it down this way so let's go back and have a look so it needs one electrolyzer obviously like that and then what, is it, what else do we need power plugs and fluid output hatches two fluid output hatches one fluid in, input hatch so let's get those out of the bag actually they're in the bag aren't they those are fluid input hatches. I have only got two. I need to make another one. Huh. Okay. So we'll, turn, we'll first of all convert these two output hatches like that. Uh, I'll move this out of the way. I don't need that there. And we'll put those in here like this. So we've got coils and power points. So power points I've already got. Let's get those set up in fact i've actually got this whole machine it's only two blocks high so it's not even complicated machine structures let's get those two out of there i've got three in the bag but i think i need two a fluid input attached which we haven't got 
and a copper coil or a coil. Now, I think in this machine coils do make a difference. I was playing with motors, and we'll come to that in a minute because I've got some motors here, um, and you'll see why. So, what do I need from the bag? I need a fluid power input. That's all we need for that. About points, and then a coil. I think we'll do the same thing with coils as we've been doing before. Anyway, that's not going to like that, is it? So it's more than likely iridium coils are going to be the best one, but we can compare it against titanium coils. Like that. So that's the coil here. And then we just got to make the fluid input hatch. I think that's it. So if I right click this, it should give me a cross just whether uh, it doesn't give me a oops, don't want to do that. Just move this one. Let's see if we can get a fluid input hatch. It should be a bucket and a... Yeah, that's one. Now, we should be able to right click this down, it should form. Let's take a look at that. It's quite an interesting machine, this one. The speed is 3.12. Now the thing we can change is the coil. Let's go and try and change the coil. Now if I remember rightly, the coil is here. I know it's when it paints it, it looks a bit different, doesn't it? So now the speed is 2.208. So that didn't go faster. So we might as well have this at the fastest. It seems to be just or nearly always the coil that makes the difference. Let's just take out, just to prove it, let's just take another coil out of the bag. Because I think I've got a copper coil as an example here. Try again. 1.56 with a copper coil. So as you can see, this, the speed does make a difference. You want it to be fast. Let's put the copper coil back into there. And then let's put these two coils back into there. Try the gold coil and then the aluminium coil as well, just for the sake of testing it all out. Gold. To keep around, just press shift on this one. So 1.74 for gold. So that's an improvement over copper. The aluminium. 1.56. So as you can see, it's nearly always the iridium coil which is the best. 3.02 let's turn it on so now how this works well it needs power of course let's give it some power that's the first thing now what the big bat tells me I don't have to use my my flux configurator I tend to use it don't I, I can simply right click these and select a network that's it I think that's done I didn't select it, did I? Oh, yeah, that's right, you just click it. Now, or I just use a configurator, whichever you think is easiest. I like to use a configurator. <laughs> so now these have got power, and the machine may not be on. When you've got plug them on the configurator, I don't know. Yeah, it's on. But it needs water. Because if I remember rightly, let's look for the electrolyzer in our recipes. So we look for the uses of the electrolyzer. Um, we can either give it a bucket of water, and that will give us a tank of hydrogen or a tank of oxygen. Now if we give it liquid water, it'll give us oxygen and hydrogen. So let's do that first of all. So what I have made is a infinite water so source. Ones we've done before, very straightforward, nothing, com nothing confusing or complicated about it. Now it needs a pipe. Now, normally, in advanced rocketry, it has pipes. There we go. These are the pipe blocks in here. But they've all been deprecated, and it's got no recipes for them. They were, I don't know why they've been deprecated, especially the data one, but it has. So I guess then in that case, we can use some hardened fluid oaks. Now, obviously, I'm going to have to put a servo on that. 
while I'm doing this again, my Avengers go full again. Let's get rid of these two. Let's get rid of. Where's it gone to? The machine structure as well. Let's put down on here a servo. I'll simply turn it on. So that's now pumping water into this, and this should actually start to work. Yes, you can see it's got it's gone blue here, and these are going up and down. So that means, and this, and we get little sort of, yes, lightning bolt between these two. Now in here we should see some. Yep, yeah, we can see liquid oxygen on one side and liquid hydrogen on the other. So then we got the chemical reactor. Let's have a look at the chemical reactor. So the chemical reactor is this block. So let's look at the uses of that block. Now there's lots of recipes in this one. Um, but basically it's a tank of water and a tank of will produce a tank of fuel. Right. And I think you can well we can do it with liquids as well, but I don't have enough hardened fluid up with me at the moment. Let's just make some more because we need six pieces just while crafting isn't it what have I just done I want the recipe of this one oh tap in the wrong place let's just have a look it should be terminal's not working very well um try that again I don't know. <laughs> I want to, let's let's do it in this way. In that case, cool. Come on. It doesn't matter using transparent in this case. I don't think it's going to make too much difference. So we connect that one to that and that one to that and then we should be able to connect it up like that and do the same thing here. And of course we've got to put servers onto both of these. Run low on servers are again, huh? Now as soon as you do that you can hear it's it's working. No animation. I've got no power. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. Oh, of course I moved it. I was wondering why I'd got no power. I've got some more flux. To Let's do those two quickly. Let's move this out of the way. Now it's working. So that's now producing fuel. Now here we've got a that's an input plug. Fluid input hatch. Now somewhere is the output hatch. Where's the output hatch gone to? Fluid output hatch. And this will be giving us rocket fuel. If we just hold shift, it does tell us here we're actually liquid rocket fuels coming out of here. And water, is that? No, it can't be. Oh, that's liquid oxygen. Now, on the other side, we have an output hatch. And if I'm not mistaken, what we can do is we can put a tank into that. The output hatch, you... Yeah. Oh. Ah, oh, that be if you're actually passing items into it, I think. So I'm not sure you would pass items into this one, because you've got uh, power points and fluid input hatches. Anyway, let's do that. Oh, I suppose, yes, if we're passing buckets. No, that wouldn't work, would it? Hmm. Okay, well, anyway. So let's just get some... Another tank. Just wondering what tank to use for this. Let's go and have a look at what they've got in, in advanced rocketry. 
Get rid of the hardened. So we have these tanks here. Now it doesn't show me how to fill it up, high pressure tank. These are for oxygen really. So you can make these and they will hold lava. I've lost the recipe. I wonder if it holds rocket fuel. It's probably quite expensive. What's the recipe for this one? That's just a bottle. It. There's no crafting recipe. That's a bit strange. I would expect to see a crafting recipe. And the same for these. You can't. So what we have to do then is just simply take a tank. I know what it's going to do. Let's make an end an, an ender tank. We'll do it that way. So let's craft a couple of ender tanks. So first of all, we need some crucibles. Um, in fact, I'll do it this way. It's a bit strange those recipes. I've seen this before, but I will be honest with you. Um, Sure, whether to end the tank is one word or two. Thinking about it, I think it might be two. Well, I'm having difficulty seeing it again. How many pages have we got? Two, so it should be there. Good. So, the crucibles, first of all. Actually, I might already have those. I made a whole bunch before I started. So we've got two of those. Now we need to give them some dye. I reckon that a good colour for that is probably yellow. So let's get some yellow dye out of the system. Maybe I've got it already. Yes, we have. Let's do four. Put these down. The reason I'm choosing yellow is because I want it to be similar to the actual thing. I don't think I've got any anything with yellow on it at the moment. It's not filled up if it has, that's good. So I've just chosen to do it that way. I already excavated those two. They were diagonally. So the fluid output hatch. Let's put a tank let's put a pipe on that one. I don't think I can pull it, you never know but I'll so it's got oh that's oxygen so it's here so let's put this down here good and let's put the ender tank on it like that and i don't think i can pull it across and push it so we have to have to use another servo And as you can see, this is filling up very slowly. How much have we got in there? 4.9 buckets. Okay, I think the colour, the blue one's just buckets, and the other one isn't. So let's go now. Uh, go down. Ooh, we did make the yes. I've got the fuel load, haven't I? Let's go down back to the rocket place. Now we need a fuel loader. So we've got the the end of tank here with the with the fuel in it. Now let's get the fuel loader out first of all. I think that's a really good idea. This is the fueling station. Now I, this needs power as well. But what I'm going to do for power is I'm going to dig it underneath here. I think. do it the same way as it is the previous one some redstone flux energy I don't think it takes very much power to be honest with you hard and flux duct will be fine in fact I think just ordinary flux duct will do the job anyway 
so they will be connected I'm not going to check that they are connected but I'm pretty certain they will be so let's just break that one off here put that up back up to here where did it go to here let's put it down here then it should connect nicely let's configure it let's have a look at this thing so that's now got power yeah we've done that one already haven't we so I can now put the dirt back into this place I'm just wondering where to put the tank I think I can put it on top and turn it on yeah I can and it fills up now the next thing we have to do is link these two together hmm you know I've forgotten how to do that let me just get my block of dirt out of here so this now leads linking to the rocket so that's a look. there is a linking tool Let's get the linking. Let's make a linking tool if we can. So I think it's called Oh. Won't help if I got the thing on there, will it? There we go the linker that's right so we can craft the linker let's do that then you actually end up with quite a lot of these linkers let's just do the crafting of course we're using this one we have to do it twice now this thing here this links uh, things to the rocket so for instance we've got the assembly machine we don't need to do that one we need to link the fueling here I shift right click that and you've programmed the link with the fueling station at, a, at the X, Y and Z coordinates and then you simply right click the rocket and then you get this line saying that the rocket's actually being linked now what should also happen if we look at the rocket now press F uh, is it F? I don't need to go and check what <laughs> I used to use F let's just check what um, control of setup. Well, we got a setup of this one. Let's go to controls. So advanced rocketry, is, I think, is quite near the top. I'm not saying that. Let's see it. Sure, there's an advanced rocketry one here. Huh. Well, I don't see the advanced rocketry one. We should be able to see the fuel on this thing. Ah, I keep getting into it. I don't want to be in it at the moment because I, I've got my spacesuit with me, but we're not getting any, any destinations. I keep right clicking it as well. Oh! Nope, that's not telling me on the left hand side, which of course just happens to line up with the other ones. Oh, yes, it does. At the bottom, fuel of the three on the left hand side, the very left hand side, just about two thirds of the way down the screen, you've got fuel. That says it's full. Right, okay, good. So the next thing after that is to make, we need a controller, I think. Let's go back to base. And have a look for what else we've got, we can actually make in this one. So we made the link and that links together. We need to get a, a planet destination chip now. These were Planet ID chips. Now these are made from basic circuits. I think we made a Baker's basic circuit last time and a satellite ID chip. Now a satellite ID chip is just a crafted basic circuit like that. Put that in there. So then we can make this, the Planet ID chip like this. If I remember right, that's how it works. 
but we haven't got a planet to select yet so that's the next problem we need somewhere to go to so let's have a look at what we can do in here how do we select our destination do you know <laughs> I've forgotten it's driving me crazy it bothered me we can't get make any tanks that's a bit weird oh yes we can ah the rolling machine yes oh yes that's water some iron sheets ah okay I've forgotten all about this okay let's get some iron out of the system in that case then we probably can do the others but can we do it with this one yes we can the rolling machine titanium sheets okay good let's get some titanium out of the system here yeah. I don't like that I don't know what it is I've got 25 titanium sheets um, let's take a couple of those I suppose eight will, eight will do won't it because they're going to come in handy these things so we have to roll these again the import hatch let's put these through the rolling machine again and then we should get these what do you call them sheets the sheets are before weren't they so these ones which are you get one one for each one so now what we have to do is put those ones through the rolling machine again and I think we should get is that the right recipe? Yes it is good. We should get the tanks. Super high pressure tanks. Which I think are the highest of the ones we can do. The next one down would be aluminium I'm guessing, yes. And the capacity of these it doesn't tell you. So I've made four tanks. They don't stack, which is nice of them. <laughs> Let's put them in there. We're not ready to go yet because we haven't got. We've got this gas charge pad. We don't have any oxygen to put into it. We're making oxygen because we've got this machine here, and that will actually make oxygen. I think this one is the oxygen tank. It is. And that's an oxygen output hatch, it's fluid hatch. So what you can do with this is to put it down. Well, I've got to get it out first of all. It's going to get it out the bag like this. Try again. <laughs> Try again. The right thing and put a tank, a, a duct between the two, of course, as, as normal, and use the last of our. Uh, servos turn that on so now this will have ox will start to get oxygen in it and with that you can then charge up your you have to stand on it oh no you don't you have to like, get something to put in it so what we put into this for example is a tank like this and that will start to fill up in fact it's already filled up it's got so this has got eight buckets of oxygen on it and then what we can then do is go back to our suit workbench. I think I've got that here. I have. Where are we going to do this? Well, I suppose we don't want to be too far away. Let's just do it here for this. Because it doesn't matter. We can always change, move this later on. So we can then put. We need to get our suit out, and the one that needs it is the space suit chest piece. It needs the air tanks. It already has a bit of air in it. I think we have to charge that up. Let's see if that charges up first of all. So you put this into here. It will. It should charge up. No, it doesn't. It's not going to charge up. And so we have to put the tanks into it. So we can put one of the tanks in here. Oxygen O2, like that. We can, and then we can take it out. We take it out. It's got that oxygen tank on it. And does it tell us anywhere? We have to put it on, I think, and that will tell us if we, if we put this one on. Just 
you see on the bottom here an, ox an oxygen gauge I don't need that for the time but let's take it off and put the other do another tank so let's take this off here shift click into that let's put this into here again and you'll see the tank still stays there let's get another tank out of the bag put this on and what you can also do is this you can take the suit out now it doesn't cost anything to do the suits you can put the suit on and then you can stand on the charge pad oh I think that's the right way Oh yes, you see this, the oxygen bar just, just trundled up there. So if we now take this off again, uh, and put it back into the workbench. Let's see it, oh, because I'm still wearing it, that's the reason why. Let's take this off here like that. Let me swap them over. Put that back into here. You'll see now this is both, both of these have got 8,000 millibuckets of oxygen. So that's how that works. Well, actually, we do need oxygen if we go anywhere at all. To, so we'll leave that for the time being, and then we can take spare oxygen or fuel. I think you can also put fuel into these. If I'm not mistaken. Now, how would I get the fuel into there? Maybe I can right-click this indeed I can and I've just got an, something what did I just get for doing that so that's now got eight rocket fuel it's got eight buckets in it rocket fuel quest updated oh, okay so we've now completed ro rocket fuel fantastic let's go and have a look at that hopefully it's going to take us along a bit further I don't think it is by the looks of it let's claim the reward Ah oh, yes, here we go. But this is wrong. We shouldn't be having a warp drive before we have a space station. Because we can actually fly. The warp drive will take us away. But okay, let's look at what have we got to make in the warp drive? A warp drive and a warp drive controller. They're both fairly expensive. Let's have a look in here. 12 diamonds. Oh, okay. Can't complain about that. So now let's have a look, how can we do with the warp drive and the warp controller? There. The warp core. Okay. One copper coil, steel plates and two advanced circuits. Advanced circuits are advanced circuit plates which are made in the precision assembly with gold blocks of redstone and a silicon wafer. Well, that's not too difficult, let's go and get those. What are you going to need? Let's take four. Well, let's take six. Probably need eight. <laughs> so I'm going to remove these two blocks of redstone out of here and put that into that. Now, precision circuits, I've actually got them in the system, so let's get some circuits out of here. Is it wafers? Got 96. Let's take out of here few of those put those into here we'll only make six of the most so so now we have these six advanced plates From, ah, I could leave those in there I guess and then we could cut those up I think the I'm not sure if they got the only use of that I thought if they got any uses just the only uses you can cut them so let's put them into the input hatch and take our advanced making four each one that's nice of it probably means we make quite a few of these there we go oh, so I made six didn't I so we get 24 Let's run. So now, warp drive controller, I should just be able to make that because I've got a copper coil, copper coils in this bag, I've only got one as it happens but uh, one's enough, warp core, 
So then the other one is the warp controller. Now what are we missing in here? I guess we're missing a few bits and pieces. We're missing a circuit board. What's the recipe for circuit boards? It's got two. Redstone, copper plate and silicon plate. Ah, it's done that again, I mean. Every time you press T or something like that. Oh, my inventory is a bit full. So, steel plate. Silicon plate got two. That might be enough. What was the other one? Copper plate, was it? Let's just get empty out my inventory a little bit. Like one slot will do. Copper again. Yep. Just checking which one was the right one. We'll do that in one of the other ones. Copper, silicon, and redstone. Now I've got to watch out. If I put the redstone in here, it might process those. Well, that was fast. So we've got two advanced control circuits. That's good. And we need an Emin and then a user interface, and I'll do that the easy way. Let's put those away, don't need those with us at the moment. In fact the only thing you can do is this is this way. Fine. So that should be everything we need. Oh and I need structure blocks. I need structure blocks, okay. I haven't got enough iron plates. No. That's no big deal. I might have even made some. Yes. I did. So that completed the quest warp drive. Let's have a look. F4, let's see what we got to do now. Back, claim the reward, go back. So that does open up this base station one. So we've got to do a satellite ID chip, satellite vein, and a satellite builder. So it says to make the space station, you're going to need to build it on the launch pad where the rocket assembly machine is replaced with a satellite builder. You need to put the satellite deep chip in it and the satellite bay to build the space station. Well, I've done all, I've done this in the previous episode. I should even be able to remember to, how to do this. So we end up with a space station container. But that's for another time, I think. That's going to leave us on to CO2, which should be oxygen scrubbers, and the moon. Okay, hopefully that's going to tell us how to do it. So... I don't know why we need the warp controller, but let's have a look at this. Four upgrade storage, five. Nice reward. Can't complain about that. Why do I put those here? So that's it for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I hope so. Next time we're going to carry on with this space race and see how far we get. So until then, bye for now.